Hey what's up guys, I'm Nizio Cole, and it's been almost a month since Watch Dogs Legion was released. And if you've read the title and the thumbnail, you've probably already figured it out that this is my review of the game. Most of the big guys have had their reviews out for weeks already, but I wanted to make sure that I really took in the game and didn't really just rush through it for a video. Now, even though it's been a month, I still want to give people time before they watch the review, so I'm splitting this review into two parts. This video will be strictly no spoilers, just my opinions on everything but the storyline and characters. There will be a separate video coming out later with my review of the storyline, so this one is really part one of my review of Watch Dogs Legion. So yeah, let's get into it. So first off, let me say that this game is gorgeous, like absolutely stunning. Everything from the color grading and warm tones of the sunset to the harsh and bright lights inside of some labs. From high resolution textures to real time ray tracing, this game has all the hallmarks of next generation graphics. But of course we can't talk about the amazing graphics without the glaring performance instability and week one bugs which quite honestly kills the game for a lot of people. There was literally a bug on Xbox that literally just wouldn't allow people to save their game at all and probably won't be fixed for another week or two. To, which is ridiculous. People paid $60 for this game and they can't even save their progress? Like seriously Ubisoft, did you even QA the game at all? Day one bugs are one thing, but this is just totally unplayable for a lot of people. If anything, I wouldn't expect this from console where they literally have the hardware to test the game with months in advance to the game's release. Now I don't doubt that a lot of the performance issues on the game side can be resolved over time, but this is just ridiculous. All these delays for a bug riddled game on release. For me personally, it's been kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's laggy. Keep in mind, this is with everything else closed, drivers updated, everything like that. I actually made a video a few weeks ago on how I've actually improved my frame rate since release. If you want to check that out, it'll be in the top corner of the screen and also be linked in the description. So I actually had to sit on this one for a while to actually think. Did I really enjoy the game? In this review, I'm trying to be as honest and upfront as possible, just speaking from my personal experience playing the game. And I will say, I actually enjoyed playing it quite a bit. The gunplay feels nice and refined. I talked about this in the video I uploaded right before the release of Legion. I'm glad it's not the whole, oh, I have an AR, but I also have an air shotgun and a paintball rifle. Kind of this mismatch of lethal and non-lethal silly weapons. And while it's not impossible to kill in this game, it's a lot more in line with the vibe of the game when you go for a non-lethal run. Just a few notes that I took while playing the game. I was a little disappointed that they did away with the skill tree and I don't hate the replacement. A nice simple tech unlock page in the menu with all the upgrades and requirements. The grind to get all the tech points felt a little bit easier than research points in Watch Dogs 2, but other than that, it didn't feel too different. Driving from place to place with your RC, crawling into vents, and picking things up. Police chases feel considerably easier, but with more variety. The police chases in Watch Dogs 2 were really algorithmic in my opinion, and the addition of the Albion chase drones and checkpoints were a welcomed one. Definitely had me looking down, checking the map more than I would in Watch Dogs 2. Speaking of driving, it's a lot less varied from car to car, but feels a lot more polished and the driving experience is really satisfying in general. I love the design of the cars themselves in this game. They look and sound exactly how you would think cars from this era would look, and it's not too overdone or the type of cheesy sci-fi car that you would see traditionally. Although I'm not a big fan of the removal of the phone where you could control a lot of the stuff that just makes sense, with everyone having an optic, it just makes sense that smartphones would be outdated by this time. And to bring it back to the graphics section, the lag really cuts into my ability to get lost in the game. And honestly, the lag combined with the screen tearing gave me actual headaches and discouraged me from playing the game any further. That's one of the reasons it was so hard to write this section was because I was trying to figure out if I actually enjoyed the game. Driving around the world made the frame rate noticeably worse, as well as the screen tearing and sometimes I would just get ready for a mission, see that it was 2 kilometers away and just put on auto drive. For me, a big part of the experience of the previous two games was driving from mission to mission, listening to music on the radio, hearing different NPC conversations while looking at the scenery, and that's something that I simply couldn't enjoy in this game. I also think the blackout hat could have been added and I think it would have looked amazing in London, but to be honest, my theory is that they will probably add it with the new DLC with Aiden and Wrench. Fire, 
Honestly, I love the soundtrack of this game. And when I say the soundtrack, I also mean the radio, which I mostly mean the radio. Which, like I said before, is a huge part of me experiencing a game and really putting myself in the world. I feel like the soundtrack felt a lot more cinematic and grandiose in this game. From the start, I could already tell what I was getting myself into. You know the music that plays in TV shows or movies when there's about to be a tense moment? That's what it was like, but the only difference being you're actually playing through that tense moment, and it was a really cool feeling. This game, more than any other game, made me feel like a skilled operative part of a secret organization. And the music just added to it. Just the sound design in general. Like when you would go up to do a stealth takedown from behind an Albion guard and it kind of slows down time and plays the sound effect, that feels cool every single time I do it. As far as the radio songs go, I already have 10 on my personal playlist and I've been listening to them non-stop. Despite the lag and screen tearing kind of ruining my driving experience, I still get a pretty good vibes when listening to the radio songs. And I actually have a playlist of the radio songs if you guys want to go check that out, some of my favorite from the game. I'll have it linked in the description. There is so much that I have to talk about as far as atmosphere goes that everything I just talked about contributes to. The world really feels lived in. I really get this dystopian, no privacy, futuristic feel from the game. Right from the beginning of the game, I noticed a bunch of reused assets including sound effects, 3D assets, and even a few radio songs. which. Other people might call lazy, but the way I see it, it really connects this game to the rest of the Watch Dogs universe. Especially the small details on how the taxis are, the same company that did the Driver San Francisco app in 2016, or even just looking at the spider bot, which is a miniaturized version of the giant militarized spider bot that was in development in, uh, with Titus in the Titus mission in Watch Dogs 2. Even with subtle stuff like this, the game does a really good job at implying the passage of time. Let's talk about London. The city is filled with Albion banners and propagandas on every street corner with accompanying protesters and graffiti. I think Ubisoft did a really good job in making the city feel lived in with actual people and how they would respond to Albion coming in and setting up shop in their city. The random GBB news clips feel a lot better and less intrusive than the WKZ in the first two games, as well as the addition of podcasts and talk shows just add realism to the game that wasn't there in Watch Dogs 2. I really love the small futuristic details like the light bar and the sidewalk indicating when to walk. That's a type of city infrastructure that you just would expect. It feels different from other games set in the future that are disproportionately futuristic. Like, some things seem almost too futuristic, but some systems feel outdated. I'm so invested in this world that when I see a protester getting beat up or arrested, no matter what I was going to do at that time, my entire focus is shifted over to that Albion guard, and I take him out and free whoever he arrested. Even if it means taking extra time to get to my mission. I actually feel like I'm a part of a revolution to take down Albion and these other shady corporations. And I feel like what I'm doing helps the people of London. So yeah, I would say the, the atmosphere atmosphere of this game definitely feels a lot more involved, especially with the world and the people in it. And obviously the Play As Anyone system played a huge part in that. In conclusion, I believe Watch Dogs Legion has so much potential, but the one thing stunning its success is the lag and the bugs. Honestly, I would recommend waiting to buy the game waiting until all the major bugs are patched. Especially if you're on one of the consoles affected by this whole save issue, you won't even be able to play. So I would just recommend waiting it out. Multiplayer will be out in about a week, so hopefully Ubisoft has fixed more bugs by then. I'm gonna give my full score of the game in the second video, which should be coming out not too long from now. So yeah guys, make sure to comment down below your thoughts on the game and I'll make sure to reply to you. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you want more Watch Dogs content like this, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.